for safety and uh, so the president of FIA. Um, so we have uh, so Mr. Stefan Wallin, um, right in the middle, um, CEO, uh, uh, vice CEO of Ericsson Automotive, and who is bringing a different angle to the debate, naturally, with the business um, um, efficiency and business mindedness. I remember uh, that Ericsson has built the reputation of uh, wishing to be the cutting edge in uh, research uh, to serve its own businesses. So that cu cutting edge research uh, could be interesting for us in the connected car debate as well. Uh, it's our uh, pleasure as well to have the CEO um, of DECRA Automotive with us, Dr. Gerd Neumann. Um, and um, well, uh, I'm sure that DECRA is very well known, um, but I should say that uh, recently uh, we have seen that uh, there is a growing cooperation between the uh, World Forum and DECRA, and also uh, addressing some of the um, policy and uh, regulatory issues from a research and analytical perspective. Uh, so with this, I would like uh, to ask our distinguished panelists to make an introductory remark um, in which uh, uh, you are also requested to consider also the updates uh, on the network car. Um, and please in, um, elaborate uh, whether, in your opinion, um, the main trends in vehicle innovations um, that would be relevant for connectivity, how these main trends can influence um, or serve future mobility demands, especially in light of the UN Sustainable Development Agenda. Um, so Mr. Jean Todd uh, was the keynote speaker, so we will let you rest a little bit, uh, and uh, uh, we will start um, actually with a representative from DECRA, Dr. Nyman. Yeah. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you can understand me, my voice is uh, handicapped. Uh, I'm glad to be invited uh, to this important conference, to our symposium, and to discuss about interesting technical innovations together with you, with experts. Connected Cars has started already and will provide a number of options and uh, challenges. Uh, if you are talking about networks, connected peoples uh, are very important. Uh, today we have a great uh, opportunity to share important information and meet uh, interesting people here. Uh, the foundation uh, of my company, of DECRA, last to a period uh, which was considered uh, with a lot of innovations. Um, the company started to use trucks, uh, uh, horses was out, uh, and the upcoming um, mo uh, motorization was a big challenge uh, to the 20th period. Uh, DECRA has met uh, this challenge and start top become uh, a grooving organization uh, with the development of, of new uh, mobility. One reason uh, we consult science more than 90 years, drivers, organizations, public authorities on road worthiness issues, we share experience uh, out of our uh, services uh, with interest parties. Example is the road safety report, which is launched in different languages and published uh, worldwide. The road safety uh, report consists in, of a number of uh, measures to uh, improve the road safety. Based on uh, this knowledge and experience, future mobility can be developed more safe. Maybe we will see urban mobility like this, but it is sure the future started 
now every day. Uh, one of the most important uh, goals for us is, uh, is a Vision Zero, and uh, we have contributed on that a lot, considering uh, the fast development in vehicle innovations. We are uh, committed that PTI, periodical technical inspection, guarantee uh, this high level of uh, road safety, of uh, vehicle safety during the whole uh, lifetime of the vehicle and uh, we think it is very important. If we look um, on the vehicle de uh, develop development and its big steps uh, that we can see what's possible and uh, what connected car contributed. Um, summarizing, I would say the possibilities uh, of connected car are diverse and could help, firstly, to improve uh, road safety. To use this potential to improve uh, road safety, we need to have uh, harmonized uh, rules and uh, define it. Uh, responsibilities uh, worldwide, it is our opinion. Um, the high level in uh, road safety and environmental protection as well as in customer uh, protection can be supported by a third party organization. But for this, uh, it needs uh, information, data from the OEMs. Last year, we have uh, developed and launched uh, a PTI scan tool, which is used during German PTI, German uh, periodical technical inspection. We are uh, convinced that this is a really important step for PTI in increasingly connected world. Thanks for my first uh, statement. Uh, thank you, Dr. Neumann. Actually, with your introduction, you have already answered some of my follow-up questions. But don't worry, we will dig deeper then. Um, so the next uh, will be Mr. Stefan Wallin uh, from Ericsson. Okay, uh, I will bring a little bit different perspective, as you said. So I will start by giving a little bit background to Ericsson and why we are here. I mean, Ericsson is not an automotive company mainly, of course. We are a communications and a mobile technology company. And today, I think we we carry about 50% of the mobile internet world, uh, mobile internet traffic in the world. So therefore, of course, connected cars and, and the industries that connect, that is, of course, uh, very important for us. And since we see that we need to meet the demand for new traffic in our networks. We have a vision about what we call the network society. And the network society is what we say that where everything that benefits from a connect connection, people and things will be connected. And uh, uh, we think that this connectivity will empower both people and society to then achieve better or to become better. Uh, in, this, in, this, in this context, we, have, we are focusing or shifting our focus not only to work with mobile operators, but also to work with industries that connect. Uh, I believe that we are, or we believe that we are in facing an industry revolution. If we go back like 10 years and looking back at where we are right now, I think we can reflect, all of us, that we are actually standing in for a dramatic change right now. And that change, or one of the triggers of that change, is connectivity. Uh, I think the, 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 the ingredients of this uh, revolution, what you should call it, is that mobile networks, uh, the, the coverage of mobile networks and the quality of mobile networks has now become up to an inflection point where uh, we can implement, or industry can implement new businesses, new use cases on top of this infrastructure. Uh, you can implement also new use cases like safety for cars, etc. So that's why we see this big changing happening right now. Uh, a reflection is that the, the pace of change is is uh, really uh, increasing. So we see that it, it took a long time to introduce fixed network to connect places and, and, and with the mobile network we connected people in a shorter time. We see in front of us a very quick change connecting uh, industries and things. Uh, and I think what is more interesting in this change is that um, 
if we 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 the future is unknown. Uh, if you to put put it put it in perspective, when the mobile net, when my mobile phone came, I think we all th thought it was great that we can use and call when we're not at home anymore. But if you look on if you look into how we use the mobile phone today, we use it for so much more things than calling. Right, it's a minor use case. And if you would have asked us 10 years ago, I think no one else would be able to see this in front of us. And the same thing will happen with connected cars. So when we connect cars, we, we, we tend as humans to implement or think of use cases that are tangible and that we understand today, but it ac actually will evolve. So the connected car will be a different animal than the unconnected car. So I think we have an exciting, uh, exciting uh, future in front of us. Just some things. What, what we see also is that when, when you connect a, uh, an industry like, or a product like the, the car, you open up for a different type of business around that car. It, it becomes a connected product is different from an unconnected product. And you can suddenly implement both services towards a connected car, but you can also implement um, new type of use cases like safety use cases. Uh, I think we will t touch more on that. But for instance, for today, we see the, the, the theme for today is safety and road safety. And in this context, uh, we, Sean, you, you mentioned, for instance, uh, autonomous driving cars or self-driving cars. And I think in, in order to, to implement that in larger scale, we believe that connectivity is uh, a foundation for that. Uh, self-driving cars will always be able to drive and handle the imminent traffic environment. But with, the, with the mobility and with the, with the analytics of data, we can help self-driving cars to get an improved line of sight, to see what's further down the road, uh, reroute from accidents, etc. And I think that will be a foundation and an enabler for self-driving cars. But I will st I'll stop there as an introduction. And then uh, if there's any questions, I'm happy to receive, of course. Thank you, Stefan. Uh, we move on to Mr. Todd. Thank you. <clears throat> As uh, I mentioned uh, earlier, I mean, we have a great opportunity to see the evolution of uh, connected cars and uh, the moving and uh, the speed of our things are moved in the industry by having access to this uh, Geneva Motor Show. Various uh, information and communication solutions improve uh, safety, efficiency, and uh, comfort of motorists on the road. Real-time information can warn drivers on hazards ahead on the road and allow them to avoid unsafe zones, which is something absolutely unique, and it's in a revolution in, uh, in traffic. Automated and connected driving can significantly improve traffic flow, reduce congestion, and uh, navigate drivers towards the fastest and safest route. Uh, incidentally, the US National Highways Transportation Safety Administration estimated that up to 80% of crashes may be prevented by the use of in-vehicle connected technology, which is absolutely a fascinating potential result. In motorsport, I mean, the FIA has a concrete experience of ensuring a strong coordination in piloting, testing, and deploying new technologies. And I will give you a few examples. Video, radio, GPS, telemetry system are now a key part of every category of racing. Formula One drivers have now access to Wi-Fi connection in the car. This allows engineers to download important data on vehicle performance and analyze it to further improve technical configuration of the car. Another example of connectivity in motorsport is the technology currently used in the virtual safety car. I'm sure you have seen that watching a Grand Prix on, uh, on TV. Going back on real life, connected technologies are embraced only when they meet expectations and the needs of consumers. A recent study carried out by the European Automobile Club members of the FIA shows that when buying a car, 76% of consumers are interested in connectivity for one, better safety, two, better fuel efficiency, and three, reduction in traffic. It is imperative that the vehicle has a security arch architecture that is robust and flexible and adaptive over the life cycle of a car. But I would like also to give you a few figures. In low and middle income countries, 82%, we have 82% of the world's population. 
54% of registered vehicles and 90% of road traffic fatalities. In high-income countries, we have 18% of the world population, 46% of registered vehicles, and 10% of road traffic vehicles. So, I mean, in conclusion to this uh, question, uh, amazing progress has been achieved in developed countries. But unfortunately, you know, we are talking about fascinating new technologies, but we must think that a lot of road car users, of pedestrian, of cyclists, motorcyclists, they don't have yet access to all that. And we need, we need to make that changing. Uh, you will probably remember, and I invite you to see the film from Luc Besson, Save Kid Life, which was launched a few months ago, when you see that children to go to school, it's a fight in certain countries because there is not pedestrian road pass. And so on one side, we are split with two words, modern world, where you have access to all those facilities, and developing world, who does not know yet what is a safety belt, what is one helmet. And here is a serious problem, because on one side we speak about those fascinating technologies, but in another part of the world where 90% of the crashes are happening, they don't know that it does exist. So we, that's, for me, the biggest fight we have to undertake behind all what has been done on new technologies. Uh, thank you very much. We have heard a lot in the introductory speeches um, the overarching uh, concern about sustainability and within that uh, uh, actually all of the three panelists uh, uh, voiced their concern for safety. And with regard to the huge achievements um, in safety improvement in the developed world, uh, the concern about the growing divide between developed and developing countries in terms of traffic safety. Uh, we have also heard very interestingly about the, the drivers for uh, new technologies and uh, um, the speed, how much the speed has become very, very fast, faster than before. And then, I remember decades ago uh, when uh, you learned uh, basic macroeconomics, uh, you learned that uh, technological innovations in the military sector and later on in the space sector um, had uh, not that fast, but still had a very important impact on the future of the other technologies uh, in businesses. Um, in the automotive industry, actually, what we could see that uh, there is a big uh, influencer, and that is the motorsport. But there is another influencer, a new influencer, that is the telecommunication, the communication sector. Um, and a very new one, uh, and that is the society. So not simply through technology, but technology is, is changing through society. Because uh, being connected is not simply a technological question, but it's a way of living, a new style of, uh, of, of living. Um, journalist Friedman, a couple of years ago, published a paper that uh, uh, my value is not in the number of friends and people I know, but my value is uh, uh, to how many of them I am connected in a second. Um, well, this is a totally new way of, of living, uh, which uh, is having an impact even on the automotive industry. At this junction, I would like to open the floor either for questions to the distinguished panelists or to make a comment, if you wish, on these topics. So just raise your hand uh, who wish to come in. Yes, uh, we see a gentleman in the middle. Yes, please. You are very indulgent. Uh, first, we can take for granted that the automated car, the automated driving, will be a reality soon. But is there not a longer term impact in the relation between rail and road. If invisible rails become the reality for the road, there might be within 10, 20, or 50 years, I don't know, a convergence, since this is one of your fetish words, 
a convergence between the rail network, the road network, development of twin vehicles, etc. So this is my first question. The second one is, I will try to turn it into a question because you always prefer a question. Is there a hidden logic behind the organization of events like this one? Because two weeks back, there was a press conference of the car show, the launching press conference. And most of the question of journalists were on the network car, automated driving, network, etc., and the like. And no one in the uh, show management mentioned that there was an event precisely addressing all these issues within the frame of the show. So I thought that it would be a service to mention that. I, spoke like today and I said that there was such an event precisely addressing these uh, issues in within the car show and the whole team of the car show totally denied it said that there might be in the remote past some similar silly events but surely not this year and I was totally misinformed so for the car show you do not exist then for you the, f the round table of yesterday does not exist because yesterday in the next room there was a round table on more or less the same topic, autonomous car, automated driving. I still have the badge. It was organized by Fleet. It's called the Fleet Meeting. It's a yearly, third year Fleet, Fleet Magazine meeting and it was on the same topic. So for the car show, you don't exist. For you, the f uh, yesterday's uh, round table does not exist. And if you had been informed of each other, probably the program would have been positioned slightly different. So that was my second question. What is the hidden logic? Because I'm sure there is a logic. I'm sure that I am the one who does not understand that logic. What is the hidden logic? And the first one on the convergence between rail and uh, uh, road, especially for freight. Very good. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, first, uh, let's take your first question about uh, the convergence between modes. But if you wish, you can add convergence between <coughs> sectors because we witness a convergence between transport and communication as well. Um, who would wish to take the question? I can respond a bit and then maybe you can continue. But uh, already now, I think that we see a convergence between, I mean, we call it multimodule transport systems and we see needs where uh, especially in larger cities when you need to trans uh, solve transportation needs that they start to s have solutions where you can handle a uh, multi-module uh, commuting pattern and i think that will be more and more in the longer term this will become more increasingly importantly with the urbanization of people moving into to large cities uh, we will not be able to sustainably build out roads and infrastructure in the same pace so that we can maintain uh, a commuting pattern where everybody drives their own car uh, the, from A to B. So maybe then you can combine uh, the different transportation, transportations, means of transportation in one single planning and uh, transaction as well. But you see, we always will have to load the car on the, on the wagons or there will be one day emergence of twin tracks or twin vehicles. Uh, spontaneous is what the way I've seen it. I, I, but this is may, maybe more futuristic. But with the emergence of, of um, uh, I mean, we already already see now like car sharing or that, that type of, of um, uh, setups. And I, I think in the longer term, when you think about autonomous, fully, truly autonomous drive, then I would assume that you could actually call for a car for a certain uh, path in that multi-module transport scheme. So uh, I think those use cases probably will develop further, uh, given that you have autonomous drive coming in. Um, just to add a little bit, uh, actually, if you think of piggyback or combined transport or ro roll and the lunch trasse, uh, well, these are the traditional intermodal ways of, of moving cargo or just to focus on moving the swap body. And if um, you follow what regulatory changes has, uh, have happened recently, uh, the new agreement between um, ILO, IMO, and uh, the Ilan Transport Committee of UNECE on the uh, globally harmonized guidelines of packing transport cargo units 
first of all, containers, is actually um, pointing into this direction that there is not simply a convergence, because convergence, well, one has to uh, qualify how you understand it, but uh, uh, towards more intermodal and seamless connectivity for freight. That is for freight. And uh, we have already heard for, for passenger mobility. Uh, there is another aspect, actually, because uh, autonomous vehicles and, um, and automation is happening not only in the road sector, it's happening in the railway sector. There are mega projects with very innovative solutions, and there can be lessons learned between the sectors or between the subsectors. Um, three years ago, when in UNECE uh, we were working on the uh, promotional film uh, to improve road safety at road rail level crossing. I had a stupid question to the representatives of the railways of UIC and the Swiss railways that, well, you know, in the automotive sector, there is uh, so much going on with ITS and with automation and uh, with technological solutions of preventing uh, an accident, a crash. Um, for this road rail level crossing, is there any technology emerging? And at that time, the answer was no, no, not for us. A couple of months later, when we organized um, an event like this, uh, without any hidden agenda, but for policy dialogue, there was a professor from Australia who presented a project, uh, a very simple project, where they use mobile phone communication uh, to make sure that the train driver and the car drivers know that there is a train or there is a car or cars coming. Um, because usually when you approach the level crossing, you assume that there will be no train. Uh, so when there is this communication, very simple communication, uh, based on the presentation of the Australian professor, a couple of European countries invited him and started to pilot out his project. So uh, changes happen extremely fast. And yes, surely there will be a convergence and there will be even new modes. Sure, we don't know yet how they will be. But with this, um, with this very important question what you have raised and um, how much the Geneva Motor Show uh, is aware of what we are doing and how much we are aware of what others do, uh, well, I can assure you that everybody is aware, but maybe it, uh, it was lost uh, from the radio screen uh, among the difficult questions they received. Um, and yes, a lot of people and a lot of organizations deal with the same topics, and that's good because we learn from each other during those, those debates and the outcome of the meeting yesterday will be a very important information for us as well in our regulatory work. Um, and later in the break, we can continue the discussion. Um, I would like to move on uh, with our next question. And our next question will be uh, to Mr. Wallen. Uh, how you see the main drivers uh, for the connected vehicles? Uh, yeah, it's a good question. I actually think that there are several, I mean, there are several different areas that, will dri that drives the uh, OEM, so the connected car. And uh, some of them are longer term and some of them are shorter term. I think in, uh, we actually performed, Ericsson performed together with at and I think it was last year, a consumer study looking into consumer demands for connected vehicles. And that clearly showed, just like you mentioned, uh, that in that, in that uh, investigation, it was made worldwide, it, it said about 50% of, of car buyers would actually consider to switch brand to a car if they could, get, uh, to, to, to a similar car, but uh, another brand if they could get the good connectivity package. Uh, what that means, of course, that uh, that is a huge demand from consumers. So, so connectivity and connectivity services has become a driver for consumers, and that, of course, is a commercially important. But I also think that, uh, more importantly, we see legislation in Europe for e-car and also in Russia, mm -hmm. etc. So we see legislation for safety features, the connected car brings a lot of potential opportunities to improve safety and legislation adopts it, and that means that the car OEMs have to make the investments needed to connect the car anyway. Uh, and th then, of course, if you have to invest in, in, in that, then, of course, you, you can utilize that also for other areas, not only the safety, of course, right? So that's good. Um, and if you look in how they then can utilize this investment, I think there is two other drivers that are very important. And one 
reflection from me that comes from the IT industry is that the, in the IT industry when we develop products or, or we always talk about the feedback loop in the development chain is extremely important. So at Ericsson when we work we even have like this scrum type of work how we work very, to get feedback from the product quickly back into R&D to improve the product constantly. Uh, one reflection from me coming into automotive is that the automotive industry as I can see it has per definition, very long feedback loops because you create the car and then you take several years and then you get it out on the market and it's first after a year or so that you can get feedback from, uh, from, from service stations on how, the, how that car has performed. So I think that there is a tremendous uh, opportunity to improve efficiency in the production cycle and, and product planning cycle. So that's a driver and that I think should, must be very important for car OEMs. But then finally, which I think is the most important thing in the long term, uh, I truly believe that the, uh, the connected car shifts focus from the car as such to car services. I mean, so services around the car. And that will actually uh, be the one very important revenue stream for car OEMs. And that's a, a very important driver. So that's the four categories I see. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Todd, how fast uh, technologies will be in your opinion? How fast we are going to absorb all these new technologies? I will say that um, there are different levels in your questions. Some technology is already available. I mean, we have been talking about mobile phone. I mean, mobile phone, anybody. I mean, I'm probably it's the easiest access. Because I think that in the planet, you have 7 billion of uh, mobile phone users. And all of them, they have access to all the services. Then, I mean, on cars, on cars you have about one billion of uh, vehicles in the planet and uh, only 10% are modern vehicles. And uh, otherwise we must consider that the average of age of the other vehicles are between 20 to 50 years old age. And as I mentioned earlier, I mean, a lot of those vehicles do not have access to simple device like the safety belt. So um, I would say depending on the country, and it's what I mentioned earlier, in a developed country it will be very quick, or it is already existing. I mean, uh, electronic stability control. Electronic stability control, uh, I mentioned in my, uh, earlier in my speech, uh, in all the developed countries it's compulsory. Uh, in developing countries, they don't know what it is. I think it's also very important to be very pragmatic and, uh, and realistic. Uh, very often, it's something I've been addressing to manufacturers and uh, also to our FIA clubs. We need to inform better. Most of the road users who have access to the new technology they don't know that it is available. So we should explain them. And I mean, we have a way of explaining them what is the content of the car. And uh, those who do not have access to it, I mean, we must uh, really make a strong effort with uh, governments. You know, in some countries, you take, a, you take Japan, uh, after a certain, uh, I think it's seven years, you cannot use a car which is over seven years. So what happened? Those cars go to developing uh, country. And uh, it just creates a very bad situation which uh, does provoke uh, crashes. So on one side, again, to answer, uh, to summarize the answer to your question, in certain countries, it is happening. But we must put a very strong effort to make that happening in most of the developing countries with low and middle uh, income. Uh, well, with uh, what you say, uh, it leads to my other question uh, to Dr. Naiman about uh, the uh, development divide and who is going to be the beneficiary of new technologies? Uh, are we talking about the future only for the developed countries, or would it be a realistic future for the developing countries? Or they would just pay for it, because the new technologies will be in the vehicles, but they wouldn't be able to benefit from it. How could they catch up? 
connected car, from my opinion, is a long-term program, long-term process. This process started uh, maybe 20 years ago. IT technology, communication technology, car technology was a, a driver uh, from this uh, development until now. Important will be uh, the next step, connected infrastructure. And it is a real challenge also for uh, uh, development countries. Of course, also, uh, on the other hand, a big chance for new businesses. For countries which will start uh, now a modern infrastructure program, is it a chance uh, can realize maybe a big step uh, on a higher level? Uh, Connected car is, for my opinion, also a nucleus for um, um, a lot of new business ideas. Also, a chance for startup companies worldwide, um, and uh, it's uh, also a win situation uh, not only for the development uh, developed uh, countries. It needs, uh, for my opinion. Uh, clear rules, harmonized rules worldwide. How it will be on detail, it is difficult uh, to say. Maybe it needs a crystal ball. Um, and what challenges do you see in this process with the fast changing uh, technologies for the whole world? And if there are any recipes for solutions? Um, maybe we continue with Dr. Neumann, as you have already mentioned, uh, one of the challenges. Uh, uh, yes, w w with view of uh, the smartphone revolution, for my opinion, it was a revolution, how it's changed our life. Uh, we haven't time, we, we can't wait. If we uh, would like to use these chances uh, for a new mobility, for more road safety, for environmental production, it needs, I say that, global harmonized mm -hmm. regulation also for the market. Mm -hmm. So modernization. Uh, yes, uh, the way the way I see it, and the challenge that we put in front of us is that we need to I mean, we need to realize that the IT industry and the automotive industry they have different uh, pace of change. So, that, so we need to be, find the mechanism how we can uh, renew uh, existing cars. I mean, the so technology. So we we need to establish a technology base where it's possible to add new features from an IT software features or, or services to cars already out there. Otherwise, I mean, the problem, as, as you pointed out, that the uh, lifespan of a car is, I usually say, like 15 years, you say even 22 longer, but regardless, it's very long. And if that is the renewal pace, then, of course, we will be in trouble. So we need to find a mechanism to, to uh, be able to update cars uh, that is all in the, on the market with new features. I mean, I, c I could not agree more to speak about harmonization. And uh, then, you know, we are facing a revolution with new technologies like... Uh, Electric cars, we know that the limitation of electric car is the autonomy and uh, recharging time. So uh, probably uh, to, I mean, to see how you can improve batteries in order to have a better autonomy and also to diminish the charging time. Then you have other technologies like uh, fuel cell. Uh, and you will see around some amazing uh, car. Then you have autonomy, which is uh, much higher, which is between 500 to 700 uh, kilometers. But here, and the recharging is about three minutes. But you need to be able to have access to uh, the suppliers who will allow you to recharge your car. Then probably, and you need to be able to buy it. Sorry, you need to be able to be buy it, to, to buy it. To, to, yeah, but one, to once it. you buy it, you need to be able yes. to, to recharge your car. Yes. yes. Uh, well, uh, I see that there is a gentleman who would like to come in at this stage. Uh, we have heard that there is different speed, definitely different um, uh, speed for technologies and for countries. Please. Hi. Hi, Roger Lanto with Strategy Analytics. So uh, 
with, with all due respect, I was wondering if the panel could speak with a little more candor about the real demand or lack of demand. What I find is car companies are not interested and are being dragged kicking and screaming into car connectivity. Consumers are not really very interested in it either. And the carriers are even not particularly interested at a certain level if you look at the fact that European carriers for implementation of the e-call mandate sought a dormant SIM so that those cars would not be signaling on the network uh, unless they actually hit something. Um, so I, I don't see a lot of enthusiastic demand for vehicle connectivity. So in that context, what are the real obstacles for getting to a connected car world? Uh, a lack of interest from the carriers, the car companies, and the consumers. How do we overcome this without, without just mandating it and forcing it? Well, great comment. <laughs> and definitely, this was what we hoped to see, that we will not agree on everything, because otherwise it's not a dialogue. And there are lots of issues, definitely sensitive issues. And those who have the courage to raise them might uh, feel a little bit even you know, marginalized. So thank you very much for raising it. And uh, I wonder, uh, Dr. Nyman. Would you like to respond to this? <laughs> yes, I think also it was a good and great comment. Uh, yes, it is my thing. <laughs> Mr. Wallen. No, uh, Roger, nice to see you. Uh, if, uh, <laughs> If, you, if your predictions are correct, I think it's a tricky question. Actually, I, I don't fully uh, have the same view on the demand. I, I mean, I, I, the way I see it is that there is a huge demand. If you just listen to the industry and when you walk around, the connected car seems to be the topic everywhere. Uh, but if, uh, if I should comment on what I see as the, some limitations, I think that one, one challenge we have that we have to over overcome is that uh, we need to make sure that the connect I mean, today, I mean, there, there are rules around connectivity and how you price connectivity, etc. that will limit the ability to actually uh, have a flourishing service layer on top of, of connectivity. And that is, of course, the reason because, because network connectivity has been, the business around the operator connectivity has been based on, uh, I mean, internet browsing from users, consumers, right? So with IoT, you have totally new use cases where you will have uh, certain devices that use minimal amount of data, very random. So I think the challenge for us as an industry will be to find business models where you can utilize connectivity for services with completely different demands on connectivity. And there I think we need to work together because this is, this is uh, still ahead of us, this transformation, and it requires the help of op mobile operators. Yeah, and actually you haven't mentioned uh uh, who are your customers, because are the customers simply the vehicle owners or the customers, uh, the traffic managers, um, infrastructure managers, uh, who might benefit from easier traffic management, or authorities who might have more data and more information to better design future mobility. Uh, so yes, uh, it's high speed change, uh, the whole architecture of mobility is changing and technology is coming into this. Uh, now I wonder how future periodic technical inspection uh, will be organized if uh, while I am driving my car, um, my IT part of the car is totally changed because something is being uploaded into my car and uh, then who will be uh, ensuring that uh, it remains safe and environmentally friendly, etc., etc. So there are lots of issues we will have to discuss, and uh, these are the most critical things for us uh, in the harmonization of regulations, uh, because we are behind time. Uh, at this stage, I would like to give the floor for our panelists for one main final message they would like to leave behind. And I'm sure that they will be available during the day or at least during the break for further discussions. So, Mr. Todd. I'm not going to, pick, to speak about uh, connectivity. I'm going to speak about the global situation on uh, road safety around the world. And everybody will agree with me that it is one of the worst uh, pandemic. We have uh, 1.3 million people who die on the road every year. We have uh, 50 million people who are injured. And uh, this pandemic, we know how to deal with. It's around uh, education, around law enforcement, around road infrastructures, 
around vehicles. We have been covering quite a lot of vehicles uh, today and uh, around uh, post-crash care. So on one side, it was I was also mentioning earlier, we have uh, access to amazing technologies, but um, it is not enough. So we, we need to engage governments on road safety in order to be able to achieve what I would call vision zero. And it is possible. So that's, for me, the most uh, important uh, things I want to conclude. Thank you, Jean. Actually, what uh, you said here uh, is the glove for a, for a future debate uh, on how technology and the industry will be able to help those who wish to see that uh, no more deaths on the roads and no more injuries on the roads can happen and to reduce fatalities by 50% from now till 2020, which seems to be the sustainable development goal of the UN. So here we have already a customer who says that, hey, I want technology, but then you reduce deaths on the roads and technology is to respond. Mr. Wallen. Yes, okay. So uh, we have talked a lot about short term. Uh, let, let's, let's broaden all. I mean, I, I think short term, uh, the connected car is a reality, even though uh, we, not all of us agree. Uh, and it's, it's driven mainly by uh, internal efficiency at the, OE, at the OEMs, I think, so they can improve their and, and new type of services. But let's look into the longer perspective, because I actually think that uh, the connected car, autonomous cars, new car ownership models, will of course be extremely important for society, for a new society, where you can start treating uh, traffic as a, as a system uh, from, from a society point of view, and not only a lot of cars running around. So we can, we can better plan for avoiding, uh, uh, for, for better plan for smart cities where we avoid congestion, uh, where we can s solve the need of transportation in multi-model ways, uh, etc. So I think the connected car, is in a tremendously important piece for going forward, uh, especially now with the, uh, with the environment, uh, environmental crisis in front of us. Uh, the connected car uh, is a piece of the puzzle to solve that, I think. Thank you. So connected car is a piece of puzzle, and you are so uh, alluded to that, that the connected car is actually more than autonomous vehicles, because uh, it uh, brings more benefits than simply autonomous vehicles. That's one element, and that might be further down the road, but connectivity is already available. Well spoken, yes. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Dr. Neumann. Short final statement. On the one hand, I'm sure connected car can be, will be, an important step uh, for more road safety, environmental protection, customer protection. And on the other hand, I hope uh, we don't lost the fun with the connected car. Wow, uh, yes, it, it's a very nice uh, closing statement that, yes, a lot of interesting benefits and important sustainability benefits are being promised with connected cars, but uh, don't forget that some people like driving. Thank you. Thank you for your participation and see you after.